numerous explanations as to why male circumcision may reduce the risk of HIV infection. Removal of the foreskin reduces the ability of HIV to penetrate the skin of the penis. On the underside of the foreskin are special immunological cells such as Langerhans which are prime targets for HIV. Small tears in the delicate skin of the inner surface of the foreskin during sexual intercourse can potentially allow for a portal of entry for HIV. Men with foreskins are more prone to sexually transmitted infections STIs, which can enhance HIV transmission. Circumcision does not offer 100% protection, but it does nonetheless reduce the risk in HIV-negative men by 60%. According to three randomized trials done in South Africa, Raqqa in Uganda and Kisumu in Kenya. Back in 2007, the World Health Organization and UNAIDS gave the green light for countries with high HIV prevalence and low circumcision rates to circumcise as a means of protecting HIV-negative men from contracting the virus from infected females. Acceptability studies undertaken across thousand and East African countries show that many men want to be circumcised, but only if it is safe and affordable. But circumcision is not without its problems. Bleeding being the most important because when a person has an erection, um, uh, erection is blood. Then formation of blood clots, I mean clots outside the blood vessels, not the blood vessels as usual. Then pain, uh, infection. Um, sometimes you could easily cut the head. Such complications some health experts say have been eased by using a pre-sterized Tara clamp or TK which caters for all ages from babies to the elderly. The Tara clamp is already in use in Uganda and at Dr. Karuhanga's clinic, approximately 20 men have so far used it. No pain, there is uh, no bleeding, uh, there is no infection, one does not need any training and uh, a person immediately can go to work. It also does not require stitches, such as or bandages. Put the glands like this, then the skin is reflected and, and put here outside, then clamping takes place like this. Once clamping takes place, then it will be, it will be holding like this. This is where the urine passes. A person uh, will not bleed because this area is holding. And in the end, the removal is very, very easy because it's just a matter of cut, cutting here and it goes. The TK stays on five to six days and you can shower or bathe with it. Arguments are that it is more cost effective. Here in Uganda, a ticket costs 40 US dollars, about 100,000 shillings, compared to other methods in private hospitals, which cost between 150,000 to 500,000 shillings. In government hospitals, the service is free. Of course, the ticket has been critiqued, especially in South Africa. Concern is that potential pressure on the glands, a sensitive bulbar structure at the distal end of the penis, if a too small device were to be used, would lead to wound disruption. There was also concern as to whether or not the device would be strong enough to crush adult foreskin tissue that was thicker than in young boys. Originally, the ticket was tasted on boys aged 8 and 9. Experts demanded further research on the ticket invented by Dr. Singh Gusharan from Malaysia. Randomized trials in the Netherlands showed low complication rates and found the ticket to take a shorter time and with an improved cosmetic result. Other such devices on the market are the Shang Ring, Plastibel and the Smart Clamp. Some are being used in neighboring Kenya and Rwanda. In a soon-to-be-released monitoring study by UNASO, the Uganda Network of AIDS Service Organizations, Mama's Club, HEPs, and other HIV and AIDS partners, a clear finding is that in Uganda, circumcision is told due to various reasons. Starizing equipment, working surgical instruments and supplies are not enough, so is space in theaters, because circumcision is not considered an emergency. Also, understaffing continues to be a problem, especially in health centers nearest to the people. It will be a wonder to hit the Minister of Health's target of circumcising 1.2 million men this year. So the question is, could a Tara clamp, which does not require theater, no qualified medical personnel, be a device that can be used to circumcise more men and avert new HIV infections? Just like prevention of mother-to-child transmission PMTCT, abstinence, being faithful to a partner and condom use, use of free exposure prophylaxis like Truvada, which is yet to be approved in September by the FDA in America. In the meantime, circumcision is also a preventive measure against HIV as the world awaits an effective vaccine against the mutating virus. Florence Naliba, NTV. <laughs>